Hello, everyone. My name is Eric D'Souza, and joining me today is Gabrielle St. George. How are you today? Hi, Eric. I'm great. Thanks for having me. Uh, Gabrielle is one of the contributing authors to Cold Canadian Crime, and uh, we are going to be talking to a few of them this week, but uh, you get to kick things off. <laughs> so uh, as a brief introduction, Gabrielle writes uh, humorous mysteries and domestic noir about subjects which, according to her, she is an expert. Uh, mostly failed relationships. Uh, hence her debut soft-boiled mystery series, The Ex-Whisperer Files, which launched How to, Be a, uh, How to Murder a Marriage and a recently released second book, How to Kill a Kingpin. And from what I understand, you got a third book coming out next year. So uh, obviously a prolific writer who also uh, is a uh, screenplay writer, uh, which the stories have produced over a hundred television shows, uh, both in Canada and the US. Um, from what I read from your website, also, according to you, and I'll, I'll read your words, uh, it says that her first short story, Cold Ethel, was published in the Canadian Crime Writers 40th Anniversary Anthology, Cold Canadian Crime. So am I reading this literally? Is this really your first short story? Other than like the story I wrote when I was in grade two, <laughs> yes, this is my first short story. And I found it incredibly challenging like way harder than writing a novel, writing short. I just, it was, and I find writing a novel hard, but writing the short <laughs> story was super tough. I, I, I believe you because when the call out originally came out, I don't know, about a year, a year and a half ago, I was like, nope, too hard. <laughs> so, so what inspired you to be like, take up that challenge and say, I could do a short story? I mean, I really wanted to be more involved in Crime Writers of Canada and, and support and be supported. And it just sounded like a super cool thing and a challenge that I was up for, I guess. But I really wrote long, which I don't usually. I love reading short. I love writing short. If books are too fat, I just can't do them. And um, I just go by the inches, you know. But <laughs> don't judge a book by the cover. Judge it by the thickness. Um, <laughs> but I think I wrote eight or 9,000 and had to cut back to maximum five. And I was at five, zero, zero, zero. When I sent it <laughs> in, that was the best I could do. Plus the title. Fair enough. Um, your, uh, your stories are funny, um, but it's crime. Uh, and in a sense, it seems like an odd parent, both having humor in a story where people die. Um, do you find that the humor that you write diffuses attention or in worst case, maybe diminishes the violence or, or are you just okay with that? I'm really, I'm really okay with it. I don't find it necessarily diminishes the violence. It can make for me even more edge of the seat, even if it's just like cringe worthy, but I love you know, the Coen brothers. Well, even Elmore, Elmore Leonard, there's so many funny stuff and so much funny stuff in his work. And that's just my fave to read. Um, writing funny does come naturally to me. I also have always believed that it's the most difficult thing to do. Like there's less comedic actors than dramatic actors. I mean, it's tough. Even stand-up comedy has got to be one of the toughest gigs out there. I could never. But I feel like it is a calling. And if you can write funny, I really feel like you should write funny. You know, so I love it. And I love anything Coen Brothers, that kind of black, black humor is what I love. Black comedy. Dark Does the comedy. comedy sort of come natural or do you write a story and be like, oh, wait, I should add some humor or it's just when the pen's on the paper, it just comes out that way. When the pen's on the paper, it comes out that way. Yeah. And my stories are pretty much character driven. So um, they just take over and. My back right, my background is in screenwriting. So, you know, it's all about outline, outline, and then get everybody's notes and do an outline that's just twice as long and then get everybody's notes and do an outline that's three times as long. And that's really the process. And by the time you go to write a script, it's almost like filling in the blanks. But I intended my these novels to be, you know, outline first. And I did that. And then I was just shocked when I was writing and the characters just took over and I've read about you know lots of our um, authors say that happens for them 
And it really did. And I almost just felt like the typist. So once the characters were really fleshed out, they were just talking. I'm most comfortable writing dialogue, probably from a screenwriting background. That's part of the thing. So my my books are dialogue heavy. And that's maybe one of the reasons why the characters step in and just kind of throw me in the backseat. I'm okay with it. <laughs> um, in your story called Ethel, Ethel's not actually in it that much. Uh, it was, did she get sort of get cut? Was she sort of the editing? Like she's there for her purpose <laughs> and, and yeah, she's great I mean, at it, but uh, she's not around that much. <laughs> I guess it's just the effects of her and the, the, the what's cold about my story, because that was the mandate that, you know, somehow in the cold Canadian crime, the theme was coldness and um, she has a cold heart. And then it's the the ramifications of her cold heartedness that her daughters must deal with, and her sons in laws. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, uh, you sent me your book. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Uh, uh, How to murder a marriage. Uh, but first thing that jumps out uh, is is obviously the cover. And actually, I have it here because I I just had to show it. And um, I wanted to ask you, like. Um, to give credit where credit's due it's, there's just something about it. it just catches the eye and in the world of amazon and stuff where you, we see a thousand covers a year or a day even maybe uh this one jumps out so did you have a hand in its creation or strictly kudos to the publisher um mainly kudos to the publisher but we went through so many covers um from a number of different designers to the point where that was the reason we delayed publication by four months because the covers just weren't coming together and the publisher was happy with cover number three and cover number five and I was up all night crying and it's not the cover <laughs> and then they sent the graphic for this and I was like that's the cover and I have four kids who all live overseas but one of them is a fashion designer and a fabulous artist and he's great with graphic design and he uh chose the font and then the spacing and and I wanted to add the lighthouse into her, the lighthouse icon into her sunglasses. And so kind of a lot of details like that, but the basic design was the publisher. And when they hit it, they hit it. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, sorry for everyone, including myself, who hasn't yet read the book. Uh, I read the synopsis a little bit on your uh, website, gabrielstgeorge.com, but can you tell us a little bit about it? And it's the first of a series, right? Yeah, so the main thing about it for me is that the protagonist turns 50 in the book. And it's, um, you know, it's a soft boiled mystery, which I'm really hoping I mean, I wrote an article for crime reads on that, because it needs a renaissance, I feel that genre and some people, I mean, the first one editor I sent it to before I had a, a book deal, said like, what's soft boiled, and then another one said, yeah, don't do soft boiled. It's like not a thing. And um, I'm like, no, it's a thing. Because for me, it's really between cozy, where there's loads of mature female sleuths. Um, but I love a cozy. I do. I love a cozy. But it's not realistic. It doesn't, I don't see myself reflected in cozies. You know, I don't, you know, I don't run a bakery. I don't, you know, there's just like, there's so many things and it's great. But and I, my favorite thing is hard boiled, but that's not this. And most of the females in hard boiled, other than, you know, um, a Kinsey Malone or so is, is they are femme fatales mm -hmm. or they never age out because just the nature of their work, if they're 40, it's really hard to chase down criminals after a while. Like it's just, you're going to, you know, so they don't ever age. They, you know, they are for book one to book 25, they're basically the same age. Mm -hmm. So this is a female character who is 50 and she does all the things that me and my friends do. She, she drinks, she smokes pot, she has sex, she <laughs> goes back to school, she starts a new career, her kids are gone, things like this, but more realistic um, in that way, you know, more relatable, I think. So anyway, that's a long non-answer there, but <laughs> <laughs> that 50 year old female which is the restart button on a whole new life. She's recently divorced her. She's a new empty, new empty nester. And she sells the home she's been in for 25 years, sells everything in it and moves three hours north to the little town she grew up in where she has a lot of extended family and um, her stalkers follow her there. And she, oh, she's a relationship 
um, expert. She's a, um, the, she, she has like a column, a blog, a podcast, and she gives her dating advice, relationship advice, and she's kind of a best-selling author. So I actually wrote three books um, under her name. She wrote them. She's the ex whisperer and um, her ex is her stalker, but I have, so I ascribe to the saying, we teach best what we most need to learn. So um, <laughs> she's not, not, not wrangling her own ex, but can give advice to other people. And I wrote three books, the gal guides um, written by her as the relationship advice expert. And I get loads of mail, like people asking, really asking her relationship advice questions, which we answer. And my publisher published those books. Yeah. I was going to say is like, aren't those real? <laughs> it's like, yeah. So you, so you actually printed and published the gal guides uh, under her name? Or right. Name? Yeah. Under the oh. X whisper name. So she oh. is the, she's the person who's writing the books and answering the oh. questions and stuff like that. Mm. that that's very clever. <laughs> <laughs> How does one become a relationship specialist like that? Uh, I think you just proclaim yourself one. I mean, that's, <laughs> You know, we're supposed to be an expert after 10,000 hours of doing anything. And um, a lot of us have, by the time we're 50, have 10,000 hours um, perhaps spent in relationships. And um, that's kind of where she comes from. She's not a psychologist or anything. She's just, uh, you know, a Miss Lonely Hearts. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, that was the list of questions I had for you. Uh, to learn more, I would advise everybody to check out Gabrielle St. George's uh, website, uh, .com. Um, there's actually the artwork. I showed your first book, but uh, your second book, equally as nice of a cover. Oh, I that one here. <laughs> excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've already written book three, uh, which you promised to be published next year, I believe, right? Uh, already written. I'm, already written. I'm, I'm typing away. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm coming away as we speak. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Cold Canadian Crime, if you're watching this uh, sort of around the time it was published or produced uh, December 12th, it's currently on sale both on Amazon and at Kobo, 40% uh, off. I think if you do it today, <laughs> you might be able to get it in time for Christmas, but also the ebooks are on sale. So if you want it for yourself to check out both Gabrielle's books, I'm uh, oh, sorry, Gabrielle's short story, her first short story, congratulations. Thank um, you. Now is the time to do it. So it was a pleasure talking to you, Gabrielle. And thank you to everyone watching today. Lovely. Thanks, Eric, so much for having me. Very enjoyable. Take care.